20 years ago, Icelandic teens were among the heaviest drinking youths in Europe. Today, Iceland tops the European table for the cleanest living teens. The percentage of 15 and 16 year olds who had been drunk in the previous month went from 42% in 1998 to 5% in 2016. The percentage who have ever used cannabis is down from 17% to 7%. Those smoking cigarettes every day fell from 23% to just 3%. How did they do it? It started with discussions around behavioural addiction and the idea that people can get addicted to changes in brain chemistry. People can get addicted to drink, cars, money, sex, calories, cocaine and so on. This idea spawned another. Why not orchestrate a social movement around natural highs? How can we get people high on their own brain chemistry? They didn't say, you're coming in for treatment. They said, we'll teach you anything you want to learn. Music, dance, hip hop, art, martial arts. The idea was that these different classes could provide a variety of alterations in the kids' brain chemistry and give them what they need to cope better with life. Some might crave an experience that could help reduce anxiety. Others may be after a rush. At the same time, the recruits got life skills training, which focused on improving their thoughts about themselves and their lives and the way they interacted with other people. Laws were also changed. Buying tobacco under 18 became illegal. Buying alcohol under 20 became illegal. Tobacco and alcohol advertising was banned. 13 to 16 year olds were forbidden from being outside after 10 p.m. in winter and midnight in summer. Parental organisations had to be established in every school, along with school councils with parent representatives. Parents were encouraged to attend talks on the importance of spending a quantity of time with their children rather than occasional quality time, talking to their kids about their lives, knowing who their kids were friends with, keeping their children home in the evenings. Parents also needed to sign agreements. These helped educate parents and strengthen their authority at home. It became harder to use the oldest excuse in the book, but everybody else can. State funding was increased for organised sport, music, art, dance and other clubs to give kids alternative ways to feel part of a group and to feel good, rather than through using alcohol and drugs. Kids from low-income families received help to take part. In the capital city, a leisure card gives families 35,000 kroner, 250 pounds per year per child to pay for recreational activities. Crucially, each year, almost every child in Iceland completes a survey, which means up-to-date, reliable data is always available. Between 1997 and 2012, the percentage of kids aged 15 and 16 who reported often or almost always spending time with their parents on weekdays doubled from 23% to 46% and the percentage who participated in organised sports at least four times a week increased from 24% to 42%. Meanwhile, cigarette smoking, drinking and cannabis use in this age group plummeted 